Okay, this video is on modifying a 9904 Mustang GT. As previously stated in another video, first thing you need to be aware of, well, not so much, but you do need to be aware, there are two different variations in 9904. You have the 99 to early 01, which came with a Trade Mech 3650 transmission, five speed, of course. And, uh, I'm sorry, the early 01 to 04 came with a Trade Mac 3650 five speed transmission and a Romeo equipped 4.6, where the 99 to early 01 came with a Windsor 4.6 and a T45 Bog Warner transmission. While they're both rated the exact same as far as horsepower concerned and, and internal gear ratio is concerned, you do need to know this for simple things like underdrive pulleys, for example. They do have they do require a different pulley system. Um, the water pump is the main difference. The cams are pressed onto the uh, 4.6, the early uh, Windsor 4.6. The cams are uh, the cam gear is actually pressed onto the cam itself. It, it's not bolted on. So if you're going to be doing a cam shaft swap, you, you need, need to definitely be aware of that. All right. When first purchasing one of these used, one of the first things you want to look at, and I can't stress this enough, is the intake manifold. A lot of times these intake manifolds are known to crack. This right here is a plastic one that's known to crack. I got it used. It's in really good shape. The reason why um, when I bought this car. It, it came with an aftermarket one. Um, I can't quite remember the name. Okay, the name of the aftermarket one is Dorman. The Dorman brand is actually dyno tested to rob 12 horses on the average from these vehicles. They do not flow as well. And if you look inside them versus the factory um, PI intake, Ford Racing PI intake as it's called, um, the ports are definitely much approved on the Ford unit. So that's the first thing you want to do is get it off. And, and so far, on the used market, I'd have to say 70% of them are driving around with Dorman intakes right now. It's not good. And there's an easy way to tell the Dorman. If you look at the uh, the ports, somewhere on the Dormans, it actually has a number for each port. I think it's actually the, uh, the bolt pattern, if I recall. But anyway, you'll find numbers like one, two, three, as you go down the line. That right there is an indication you have a Dorman right off bat. Plus, you can also see where they crimp it together and such. It's not that hard to tell. Just do a little bit of research. You can contact me if you take pictures, contact me. I, I can tell you what you have. Anyhow, so that's the first thing you want to do. Make sure it has the right intake manifold. The second modification that I would advise doing, well, obviously a lot of people say gears. You know, gears are definitely an improvement. There's no doubt that, that the stock gearing is um, rather weak. I have four tens on this, and... It, but I will probably wouldn't make that your your first. The first few things you're going to do, you're going to want to go cheap with. But the intake manifold is a necessity. You got to get the air in. The probably the second thing I would do is get it is get a plenium, a good aftermarket CNL plenium, professional products plenium, Accufab, whatever, and a 75 millimeter throttle body, hands down. And then of course you also want to get rid of the uh, the factory rubber uh, tubing. That is quite restrictive as well. And, um, and get a good can and air filter. So get some air in there. That's that's a definite must. And this is all relatively cheap stuff. I mean, you're looking at about on eBay about 100 to 120, 50 bucks for this if you get, if you go with a cheap brand. Um, you can get one of these all depending on the user new anywhere it's between 100 to 200 bucks. Underdrive pulleys, I would consider doing next. That's not too difficult, although it can be a real pain in the ass if you're going to use a um, a piggyback style like I'm using but um I got it on there pretty good it just took took a little while <laughs> after all that said I would definitely check your fuel pressure on your full throttle if you can uh, if you have a live data scanner make sure you have a consistent 40 psi fuel pressure under full throttle that is so important I'm on my second fuel pump because the first one I, f I found it was dipping down to like 29 pounds on, under under full throttle Put a new one in, it lasted for about a year and a half. And then after I recently put cams and such, I started noticing some detonation at higher RPMs, checking my fuel pressure, and I was dropping down to 32. Now I have a new fuel pump, everything's good. Cars running strong. But, um, you know, you just want to make sure everything's up to par with such like that. Spark plugs, you know, you can go NGK one, one step colder. That's an easy thing to do. Um, 
colder, you know, one step colder is good. It, it helps to ensure that you will not have any detonation, preignition, whatever you want to call it. Um, the stocks are fine too, but I would go one step colder if you're going to be running it hard. Gears are going to cost you anywhere between $600 to $700 for a nice set of gears. I would go 373. This has four tens on it, and I like the four tens, I really do, but on the interstate, I mean, if I'm doing 65 miles per hour on the interstate, I'm spinning like 2400 RPMs all the time. If I'm if I want to do 80 miles per hour, I'll got them up in like 27 2800 RPMs easily. So, you that's something you got to live with. Select your gearing, you know, accordingly, of course. This actually has the stage one camshafts. Um, I don't know the model number off that, but I'll, I'll put a, I'll put that in the description below. The uh, a full bolt-on motor stock. These came 260 at the motor, and uh, at the rear wheels, they generally, with a five-speed, put down about 230 horses. Anywhere between 220, 230 horses. After full bolt-on, talking about. A tune which this does have a Bama tune. What a tune basically does is increases the timing. Um, usually anywhere between four to eight degrees, all depending the timing is advanced on it, and um, and also uh, cleans up the fuel curve, richens it, richens the fuel curve in some areas and leans it in other areas, depending on you know, because one thing you got to consider is when these cars are sold with catalytic converters. The fuel curve is finicky to actually cater to the cat and birds to make sure they run at op optimum temperature. Emissions is the first concern with a production car. That means, so first and foremost before performance, emission is the concern. When you get an aftermarket tune, emissions is not the first concern at that point. And the, and the, uh, and the makers of the, uh, or the designers of the actual can tune, they do a pretty good job. They really do. Although I would advise a custom tune, but can tunes are okay. To get the job done. Anyhow, if you have full bolt-ons, haven't entered the motor, but you make sure you got the intake right. You make sure full plenium, throttle body, everything done. These cars are definitely capable of seeing 265 to 275 at the rear wheels, which is pretty good. That's full exhaust, no cats, off as they call it, off-road system. But technically, nobody's running them off-road. It's just a legal way for them to sell it anyhow the um, one thing uh, one thing to consider is the camshaft swaps on these things really add an extra 20 horses to, to the power curve and you can easily bump you close to 300 horses at the rear wheels at that point you have a pretty fast car considering the weight of these vehicles so that's pretty good investment You'll have a car that's capable of a flat 13, maybe a high 12s, if you go that route with gears, full bolt-on, camshaft, and you'll have this car for less than $7,000 today. That's really good bang for buck. Of course, you want to consider lowering springs. You want to consider suspension upgrades. This has been lowered, I don't know, an inch and a half. It's got e-box all the way around, however you pronounce that. Um, staggered wheels, 315. 315, 35, 17s in the rear. Bassani, um, full system on here. Nice exhaust, very loud. And uh, maybe I'll get a video of it running for you. This right here is ice cold. The idles, it is a little higher than normal. It does idle down once it warms up a tad. Stage 1 cam has a decent lope to it, nothing too spectacular, but it definitely shakes a little at idle. Um, definitely revs out quite a bit better, especially with the rev limiter lifted very well. This car has seen, I hate to say it, it's seen 7K. I generally shift to 6500. 